Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the inside of the box on our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG that I'm turning into an overland camper. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you might be curious as to why I've stopped working on the engine or the outside of the truck. Well, clearly working outside in the winter is not really a very good plan and even in the shop inside, although it's not snowing, is not really all that warm. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten or given up on the engine. It's just going to take me a little bit of time to get what I need that I'm pretty sure is going to fix it. So while I'm waiting for the weather to warm up, the shop to warm up, and some parts to arrive, let's get on with the interior. What's on the list today? I think it's time we started the AC distribution system. We'll mount this box to the space in the wall, throw in some breakers and maybe hook up a circuit or two. Now before I get started, I do want to remind you that both AC and DC electrical systems can be dangerous. They can injure you, they can kill you, they can cause fires and other damage. So make sure if you're building your own electrical system, you fully understand what you're doing. If I truly understand, I don't mean you've watched a couple of YouTube videos and you think you can make it work. I mean truly understand what is going on in a system like this. I have decades of experience both designing and constructing electrical systems like this in mobile equipment, but that doesn't mean that I couldn't make a mistake. It means I understand the risks and the choice of components that I'm using to construct my system. I will show you the components that I'm using, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the correct components that you should be using for yours. To start with, I'm using this 8 circuit DIN rail breaker box. Into this, I'll be installing DIN rail circuit breakers. You may have noticed that that box does not have any ground or neutral terminals and the breakers are single pole. That means I'll be adding some ground and neutral buses. The initial setup that I do for this distribution panel will not be the final setup. Right now I have a 15 amp shore power inlet and that's going to feed this panel directly. Now, as we progress through the build, eventually we will get a pass-through inverter mounted up here and that means that the shore power will go to the inverter and then from the inverter to the distribution panel. With that in mind, I will be installing all the breakers into the panel today, so it'll just be a reconfiguration of the wiring later on. To start with, I need to install the ground and neutral buses. These are simply going to get mounted in each side of the box. But that brings up one issue. Because they're mounted on each side, it means that I can't use any of the side entrance knockouts on the box, which means I'll have to do everything in the bottom and top. That is going to be a little tight, over here as we have a breaker underneath and a charger above but it does fit the ground and neutral buses will be tucked up tight against the side of the box and as you can see there's not really much else they can do all i need to do is drill through the outer two holes which are not threaded and put a bolt through them to save you the bore of watching me drilling in slow motion set to music and to save me the effort of doing it uh, here it is done so let me point out a couple things that if i don't point them out somebody else surely will Number one, these bolts go through to the back of the box. And I'm sure somebody is thinking, what if I touch the back, won't I get a shock? Again, this is a ground bus and a neutral bus, both of which are grounded. So if you're getting a shock off of either of those, you've done something wrong. The next is something that likely fewer people might pick up on, and that is that I have used a nylock nut to hold this bus bar in place. Generally, nylock is not something that you want to use on any kind of current carrying connector. Now, the reasoning behind that is an electrical connection can heat up. That heat can soften the nylon within the nylock nut and allow it to loosen off. But here's my perspective on it. If I've got heat coming to a nylock nut holding a bus bar into a plastic box, that's probably not much of my worry. There's already something that's gone horribly wrong. Making sure that all of these connections are made well and are tight and clean is going to yield far greater results than making sure that I use a nut that can withstand excess heat because I shouldn't have excess heat. Next, I'm going to drill out both upper and both lower knockouts with my inch and three eighths hole saw. And yes, they are called knockouts, but because of the way the plastic is molded, it's going to be much easier to drill them out. Hey, didn't I say I was gonna... Ah, just kidding, I'll save you that one too. And maybe I was wrong earlier and it is actually snowing inside. 
After drilling them out, I'm using my deburring tool to clean up the edges of the plastic. Seriously, if you don't have one of these, get one. They are awesome. So clean. And I've also drilled out the four mounting holes and taken out the remaining knockouts in the lid. The breakers that I'm using are DIN rail mount. These ones come in a two pack and also include some mounting screws and a short section of DIN rail, which I don't need. All of the branch circuits in this electrical distribution box will be protected by 15 amp breakers. Yes, even the air conditioning. Now you may recall that currently, no pun intended, I only have 15 amps coming in. All this really means is that the entire truck is limited to 15 amps. Not all circuits can draw 15 amps at the same time, but any one circuit could draw 15 amps on its own. When we have the inverter installed, we will have 82 amps, and this will greatly increase the capability of what we can do inside the truck. So let's get the six 15 amp breakers and the 50 and 32 amp inverter breakers popped on the rail. And if you're wondering how that works out to what the circuits are, well, I've drawn it all out here. The first 15 amp breaker is for the shore power coming in, then we have the two large inverter output breakers, and 15 amp branch circuits for the seat outlets, exterior, fridge, galley, and the air conditioner. Oh, and for now ignore the A's and B's, I've got them all mixed up. To mount the box, I printed some 12mm spacers to bring it out from the wall. This should help keep the wiring a little cleaner. Four screws secure the box to the electrical board, and after starting them with the drill, I'll finish them off by hand to avoid the risk of stripping the holes. With the breaker box now mounted, I can start wiring in the electrical circuits for things like the outlets in the back, and while you weren't looking, I snuck in another outlet in the front. These three locations will be on the circuit named seats. First, I mock up the root of the cable and cut it to length, then strip the jacket off. Huh, I've just noticed something interesting. Uh, with the fact that it normally is quite cold in here, but when I'm working, I turn my heater on, the thermal mass of my batteries keeps them staying cold. And if you look very closely, you can see that I actually have condensation forming on them from that temperature difference. So I've turned my heater off and I've turned the battery charger on to maybe try and warm the batteries up a little bit more than the surrounding air. But back to the building. Once again, with using a combination of items made for solid wire and stranded wire, we're going to run into a bit of an issue. If you recall hooking up the outlets, we were able to use a connector that kind of hooked around the screw, but that won't work here. And that's because these style of connectors are designed to have a screw bear down on the wire. When you're using solid wire, that's not really a very big issue because the screw just bites onto the wire and nothing's really moving. But in an application where things can wiggle around and the wires are stranded, that screw is just gonna slowly flatten out the strands. You're gonna end up with a loose connection and maybe a fire. We don't want that. Or maybe we do! Uh, no, we don't. That is why in the AC panel, we are gonna use this. What's this? Well, let me show you. This is a pin lug kit. Pin lugs kind of let you cheat when you're using stranded wire. By taking a pin lug and crimping it to the stranded wire, you kind of end up with a pseudo solid wire. Basically, you insert the wire into this little hole, crimp around it, and then when the screw bears down on the outside, the strands can't spread out because they're contained inside here. This type of pin lug kit is not that expensive and well worth the risk that you're mitigating with it. I'll leave a link in the video description. Using a good set of wire strippers, strip off just enough insulation for the bare wire to fill the pin lug. This style of stripper is inexpensive and doesn't damage the internal wire strands. Next, fit the correct size of pin lug onto the wire. In this case, for 16 gauge, it's black. Now simply insert the pin lug into the crimper and squeeze the handle. The crimper automatically adjusts to the size of the pin lug to form a solid crimp. Inexpensive and easy to do, no excuse not to use pin lugs when making a screw bearing terminal connection with stranded wire. Next what I want to do 
Let's take my pin lug, slip it into the breaker, and then as I tighten this screw down on the breaker, it's actually drawing the back half. Uh, there's like a U-shaped piece inside there, and it's pulling it up to the screw. So I guess technically what I described to you earlier is not correct for the breaker. Uh, it's, it's pulling a piece of channel up. This screw would bear directly on the wire. Wiring up a panel in a pretty tight space like that and having it look good in the end is a little bit of an art form. It's never gonna look good in the beginning. If you're using solid wire, you can kind of form stuff to where you want it to be, but stranded wire is always gonna move around until you get everything in place and zip tie it together at the end. So I guess what I'm saying is don't judge me on what you see in this video. Judge me on what you see when the panel's finished. Lastly, connecting the green ground or earth wire to the ground bus. With the pin lugs protecting the ends of the wires and the screws nice and tight, it looks like we've got our first circuit wired in. I'm sure you'll have some questions and I'm sure I'll have some answers, but I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, check out the links in the video description, but most importantly, come back next time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then. Thank you.